You win every fight, you de-escalate friends, and the ones you don't can end up bad. Welcome to today's lesson on active self-protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Weathersfield Township, Ohio in the US. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of New Bold Targets. New Bold Targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Video begins, these guys are having an argument. The guy in the red shirt is the owner of this pick and pull and the guy in the white shirt's apparently angry about a part. And so they are having an argument about it and the guy in the white shirt's getting animated about it and the owner's not taking his guff either. At some point he said he did offer him, fine man, I'll give you your money back, whatever. And the guy's not excited about it. That, that cools him off just a little bit, but as the yipping continues at each other, gives him a little bit of elbow there. Now what you're gonna see is his lady comes in as well and when he gives him a big elbow, our owner pushes back and she actually draws what I think is a big old screwdriver and, and stabs him in the guts with it and then turns it over into a short held grip. It, it could be a knife, it could be a screwdriver. I'm not entirely sure on this one. If it's a knife, it's a pretty long one. Got him in the guts and in the leg, but he does not know that he is stabbed at this moment. He's just yelling at the both of them, telling them, of course, to get out of his establishment and this and that. His glasses are on the ground, so he goes over to get his glasses. Now, the guy in the white shirt actually pushes her off and says, hey, get out of here. Let's do all these things. Now, what I know is, is that they arrested the guy in the white shirt for assault, and they eventually, I think, it took forever. The only thing I can find is an arraignment hearing for the woman here who ended up being charged with felonious assault. Uh, our defender here, the guy in the red shirt, wasn't badly injured, recovered after several days. And there's a bunch of lessons we're gonna learn here. A lot of lessons out of this one that we're gonna get to in just a second. But if you wanna take deeper dives into some of these topics, join us in our monthly online seminars. They're a couple bucks. They're a little kind of extra content here that we give, but we would love to help you make deep dives. The next several months, we are talking about legal and moral use of force. And this is a topic a lot of people are really confused about. So join us for that link in the description, would you? First things first, the life of a self-defender is a life of de-escalation, escape, and avoidance, and a life of verbal judo. Notice here our guy in red. They are yipping at each other, and I get it. Guy's saying stupid stuff to him, whatever. He's challenging him. But notice that our guy in red has his arms out at his side, his chin forward, and leaning forward on the balls of his feet. That is seen as aggression because it is aggressive. That is saying, you got a problem, let's go for it. Instead, I really want you to work on your body language to manage that and to be a de-escalator. Hey man, I don't want any problems, whatever. How can I make this right for you? And, and I think that's good business and good living in life. So instead of getting into verbal arguments with people like this, hey man, it's cool, whatever. I also think this is a great time. Again, once the guy starts getting physical and you go, hey man, I didn't want to get in a fight with him to have an OC spray on you or something like that, that you can hose this guy down with the jerk sauce and get away from him. Because again, now he's pushing. Now it's a, it's a reasonable fear of physical harm, of he wants to fight or whatever. Good thing here to, to, uh, to absolutely just diminish him and then get the heck out of here, get him out of your store. Now he doesn't hear and so instead they're gonna keep yipping at each other and now that guy's lady's coming in and she is crazy because again, she She's, she's coming in with that tool on her and willing to use it. Now, is it cool for our defender here, for the guy in the red shirt, to defend himself against this guy elbowing him? The answer to that is yes. A, he's in his own business. B, you can use ordinary physical force to protect yourself against a physical threat. And that's exactly what he does here. Pushes that guy off and uses reasonable and proportionate force to do so. So that's completely reasonable and okay from a legal and a moral perspective. But again, you better have the empty handed skills to back that up. And I, I would say in this case, push off if you have to. And again, if you have that OC spray available to you, you needed to have it in your hand earlier though, if you were gonna go and get it. Because if you try to get it after the, the physical fight starts, nah, that's not the right time for it. It's gonna get taken away from you. You're not gonna be able to use it. Now then, we can see here that, the, that this is the time that this woman's drawing this knife, screwdriver, whatever it is, uh, you know, again, out here. And I always say this, and this is very important. The eyes are the windows to the soul, but the hands are the windows to the intent. Because you see here, what I think she does is actually either she's got a hold of it with her right hand or she opened up the blade. 
So, so it's a very common thing when you're dealing with one of these situations to keep looking in people's faces, but make sure that you look at the eyes, the hands, the waist. The waist is where the bad stuff is coming from. The hands are where the damage is coming from. So don't just look at people in the eyes. Make sure that you're paying attention to their hands because that's where the bad stuff is coming from. You gotta see that coming. Had he seen that coming and seen that she was armed, he might have done something very, very different. Instead here, he doesn't know that she's armed, and so what he does is as she approaches him, he like swipes out at her like he's gonna keep her away with the face, but she reaches underneath that and stabs him in the guts. And again, you gotta know how to keep that knife-wielding attacker at bay. And usually, quite frankly, when we do this in Force on Force, in my opinion, the best way to do that is front push kicks because you start doing, you know, uh, really complicated knife disarms like you see on, on the internet and they don't work in real life under real pressure. So I really love the front push kick for this and that keeps her at bay, keeps her away from you. And if you do get stabbed, you get stabbed in the leg instead of stabbed in the guts. Now then, this is aggravated assault for sure. Notice here that she's actually switched it to a short hold, which the techniques against a short hold are just a little bit different. But I do want to say as well, the guy in the back, so if, if whether our owner or the guy in the back is armed, is, is it right and, and correct for him to draw a firearm and shoot that woman? Yes, the answer is yes. She's a deadly threat right now. She's committed aggravated assault, felonious assault for sure, but none of them have that, so that's not really something that's going to do. <clears throat> now, I just want you to notice as well, that's how long that blade is. That's a pretty significant tool that she's got in her hand there and so now as it cools off whatever you want to get them the heck out of your space and get them out as quickly as you can and thankfully he kind of calms her down and that's why I think he's only facing accessory and assault charges rather than aggravated assault and and again this is how people think I think one of the big problems that I see uh, you know in in regular people is they expect criminals to think like them and they just don't they are willing to do violence over almost nothing so you have to as well Finally, of course, I do want you to have your first aid kit on your person and be able to stop bleeding immediately. And then you need to get this guy to the hospital. Take some first aid training because it's an important part of covering your ASP.